What started your searching? As a young teenager, I was interested in science projects, nature, animals, that kind of thing. And then I discovered some kind of self-help psychology type of books when I was maybe 13, 14 years old. They were talking about the mind and how the mind works. And, you know, I think it just kicked off this interest in kind of introspection to be exploring this world of thought and experience. And that kind of led from one thing to another through my teenage years, investigating different books and different types of spirituality. And that kind of carried all along for quite a long time, up through my teens, 20s, and 30s, and 40s. And I met Sailor Bob in my early 40s. Morning has come. With the first rays of sun breaking through our window pane, songs fill the air, but there's no singer there, just an old wooden guitar playing. The intervening years were a search through different types of philosophy and spirituality. You know, I stumbled on whatever was in my environment, you know, in the various bookstores, things like books on Zen and Buddhism and, you know, various kind of pop, you know, or new age spirituality. This was like in the late 70s. And then I discovered J. Krishnamurti. He was still alive, and that made an impression on me reading some of his books, and I was able to see him speak a few times in the early 80s. That led on to a kind of discovery of the Indian non-duality. I became acquainted with teachers like uh, Ramana Maharshi and Nisargadatta Maharaj and started reading books, and that kind of became my model of, of what I thought this was eventually getting to. I think I had an intuitive sense then that these guys had uh, really stumbled across a very profound understanding, and whatever it was that I was kind of unconsciously looking for, I felt that in their uh, teachings and in the, in the life as it was presented as I could understand it, that this was uh, getting close to the essence of this, and so there was a period of years there of studying that and being interested in those kinds of teachings and trying to get out and meet others. There were, you know, various teachers and groups and things around that were along those lines, and I attended those things and asked different questions, and uh, it was never, never quite felt the depth that I intuitively thought was available, and so that kind of led from one thing to another. Eventually, when I heard that Sailor Bob Adamson was a direct student of Anisgadatta and uh, had got his questions answered, I felt like perhaps that fellow would be able to shed some light on this question that I've been investigating and trying to get to the bottom of it. And so I was able to read some of Bob's material and eventually go over and have some uh, direct discussions with him and uh, was able to get down to the bottom of this in a very direct way, as, as many people who know Bob and are familiar with his teachings can also attest to that. That really kind of resolved this search uh, that had gone on for you know, 20 or 25 years. I, uh, after speaking about this with Bob and looking at the points, you know, I felt that the questions were addressed in a very direct and final way that didn't leave any more doubts and questions and, you know, things that were, have been floating around, you know, about what is this and how do you experience it and, uh, you know, what are these people really talking about? I had a very clear sense after that that I was understanding what these teachings had been um, pointing to you all along. I obviously went to see Sailor Bob in Australia with questions and some doubts on my mind. Otherwise, why would I go there? And I think it was just, you know, trying to uh, find a direct experience, what had been pointed out, what I was hearing about and resonating with at some level over those uh, years. So it was through a series of dialogues, uh, direct discussions with Bob in person. Uh, you know, I went to his meetings and had the chance to speak with him directly and question, uh, get some things pointed out, ask whatever questions were on my mind. He was uh, open you know, and encouraging that 
I should ask whatever questions that I might have and, uh, you know, that he would talk with me based on his experience and based on what was pointed out to him. And uh, that was the main, you know, without putting a particular definition on what particular questions, it was just the, the chance to dialogue and have a very direct conversation about these questions. And that's how it worked for me. How did the search cease from inhabiting your thoughts? The basic theme of these deeper traditions, these you know non-dual traditions, is there is a, a reality that we can recognize, and in that recognition, we're going to get down to the bottom of where all these questions and doubts and seeking is coming from. So, you know, what you see when you look into that is they point out that this reality and your identity, your own self, are, the, are one and the same. And so it really gets down to then a very direct looking at who and what am I. And being uh, very focused on that, very clear and understanding why that is, you know, the root you know, of the problem. Because, I mean, we're, we're searching and we're trying to find out who we are. We're trying to find meaning. We're trying to find out where we fit in this kind of picture in this life that we're living in and essentially it gets down to we don't know who we are we don't know what our nature is we don't know what our identity is and so you know you finally start to realize that that's what's driving all of this searching and we may have been looking out into the appearance doing various things uh, searching for various answers but we're not getting down to that question of who am I what is my actual identity we kind of start to uh, realize that we're never going to find an answer if we leave that out of the equation and so you know when you really think about that and, and you look at why that is so it, you know it starts to make sense I mean how can I really understand anything else if I don't know who I am how do I know what I need in life, what I'm searching for, how do I know what my meaning is if I don't look very closely to see who and what I am. And so at that stage, it gets down to kind of that final investigation. And uh, Bob was very good at uh, pointing in that direction, keeping it very focused and showing why that was so important. And by that time uh, in my life, I was ready to hear that, and it made perfect sense to me. So we got right down to this investigation and to this looking into our you know, immediate experience here and now. What is the nature of what I am? And you know, to have that investigation completely unveiled, absolutely on the table as the centerpiece you know, the culmination, really, of this whole spiritual quest of, do you know who you are? As I recall, Bob had said to me when I, when I first met him, he, he said something to the effect of, well, do you know who you are? And I got from that, the way that he asked it and the way that he was sharing that, was this is the question, you know, this is the essence of what these teachings want us to recognize. And let's have a look, let's look directly at that and uh, answer that question. And so Bob was all about that directness and not, uh, not veering off into what I like to call secondary topics. You know, there's a lot of things in spirituality that people can talk about or look into, but I feel uh, that the essence of it is that core question of what is our identity. And so... Uh, Unlike many other uh, paths and approaches that I had uh, pursued, 
uh, with Bob's uh, point, I was able to remain aware and focused on that uh, question. And, uh, of course, you know, through a series of, of questions and, and kind of looking, it's not something that is particularly difficult or hard to see. I think what I've come to see with this stuff is it really turns out, you know, about knowing what is, where is the right place to look and what is the right question. The, the seeing and the recognizing and, and, and becoming clear on that is not difficult at all because, you know, you start out with this self-evident fact that whatever you are and whatever your being is must be present. So, you know, we're not dealing with something abstract or remote. We're, we're, we're actually looking at something that's self-evident, you know, intuitively obvious and beyond any doubt whatsoever. And some of those points were not clear to me. Bob was able to make that very clear. You know, simple points, the very simple clear and direct points that uh, in overlooking those we can sometimes miss the essence of this. So you start with uh, knowing and recognizing you know the fact of who you are, the fact of your being, knowing that, knowing that that is present and simply being willing to look and see here and now in our immediate experience what is the actual nature of what I am and what do I find when I look and I go by my own present evidence. I don't go by concepts. I don't go by uh, what other people have said. I don't go by some quotes or secondhand knowledge. I have to, to look at this immediately and see what I see. And so uh, a lot of what was going on uh, in my discussions with Bob was his encouragement to, to do just that. And that was it because, you know, uh, it's not difficult. Who we are is always self-evident, is always clear, always available, always known, always in our experience, if, to say that. Uh, it's just that we've been looking in other directions and overlooking something very simple and obvious. And, and again, you know, it's often said, and, and, I, and I do believe that, that the, the simplicity and the obviousness of this often people discount it when they first encounter that, saying, you know, how can it possibly be this simple? This this really can't be what all of this spirituality is about because that seems too simple. It seems too easy somehow. And so we'll discount that and then kind of jump to all these secondary issues which are very complex, thinking, oh, now I'm really getting to the bottom of this. Now I'm really getting somewhere. But you'll find later that, no, you're not getting anywhere. You're just spinning in concepts and thoughts, and you're missing the most important question, is who's the one doing all of that? And uh, I think you'll see all of the traditions, you know, uh, in all of the styles of non-duality are saying the same thing in different words, but essentially reality is what you are, Look into that for yourself, see it for yourself, and in that recognition, uh, we're going to get to the bottom of these questions and of this search. And nothing more or less than that, just seeing the importance of that, and that's, that's all. You know, they say that life goes on the same way, and yet it is different. How would you explain this? Well, I mean, yeah, my life is basically the same. Uh, let's say if I say, you know, I went to see Bob Adamson, and uh, my life looked a certain way. I had a certain job and a certain, you know, situation, a certain, you know, way I was moving through the world with certain commitments and activities, and you know, virtually that's the same. It's identical. I've still got the same job and, you know, same friends and same basic view of life. I mean, you know, but the thing that's different is this uh, feeling of limitation and seeking and suffering and the doubts that had plagued me, you know, so this kind of inner psychological world of experiencing life as this limited person, you know, with these problems and then being kind of swept through life, uh, kind of, you know, uh, with this note of a problem or, you know, something wrong with me. And then, you know, going through life 
trying different ways to compensate for that, to try to live, you know, and to try to get to the bottom of that. So that that whole part of it is absolutely addressed. That's what these teachings uh, deal with. That's what they uh, get to the root of. And that's what this understanding and this way of, of seeing who we are, it, uh, it addresses that. It really exposes the roots of that. And so it's life without the personal problem. You know, it's life without this seeking and suffering based on that personal problem. It's life without the doubts and the worries and the fears and the anxieties that defined that sense of identity. And so if you can imagine your life like it is, with those things, you know, those psychological worries and fears and anxieties based on that confusion of identity, if you can imagine that kind of just resolved where, where that's not taking up a lot of focus and energy and uh, life going on from there, you know, and uh, there's still the functioning and still the... Uh, the doing and the appearance and the interests of the body mind and and the relationships and all the rest of that and you know the needs of life all carry on but so not seen through this filter of separation and personal problems and so uh, to be just experiencing life as it is with that sense that there's nothing wrong with you that there's nothing to fix that there's nothing to correct or some kind of existential you know, discord at the center of your being. And so, you know, that's kind of describing it in negative terms. In positive terms, it's it's a greater ease and joy and a lightness in life, a greater uh, harmony with things and a sense of peace. And I think that's what these traditions have been saying all along in their various descriptions, that a life of uh, fullness and peace you know, free of the separation and, and fear and suffering is possible. And I, that's what I resonated with, you know, when I was very young, that this, this message that such a thing was, in fact, possible. You know, and for many years, I didn't experience that. And I didn't, I didn't know if it was true, but something resonated with that possibility. And, and over the years, as I looked into this in different ways, it became clearer and clearer that, that in fact it was possible and then that kind of just jumped right to the foreground as an immediate experience you know at the end of that searching uh, in those uh, conversations with Bob and and that's and ever since then it's been the same you know I've I met Bob uh, f five or six years ago so at that time when I left I had you know I went over to see him and uh, spent some time with him and, and really got down to the brass tacks of this stuff. And uh, I feel like at that point, the uh, the questions were addressed and the, the kind of experience that I'm talking about was uh, was was there immediately and uh, has never wavered. It's, it's never been a matter of, you know, something that you're getting and losing and struggling with and up and down and all the rest of the stuff that, you know, sometimes people imagine because you know what 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 we're looking at with this is things that are very solid and self-evident and very very clear and you know it's not it's not a matter of wavering or or you know some kind of progressive thing where you're somehow getting more and more or closer and closer so because you know when you really get it right down to the core um, we're actually getting down to things that um, just kind of exposing and just kind of dealing with the the root of it in a very very direct way so uh, there's nothing progressive there's nothing uh, you know some kind of stretching out uh, you know like it leaves you in the game as this entity this person who's kind of now got this task of of kind of working on, on yourself because you know that's always going to be in relation to that false identity and and so much of spirituality turns out to be still addressing this kind of erroneous sense of self and all of these things that you as that entity will do but this is actually something coming from a completely different perspective of essentially exposing once and for all you know the truth of that or you know or the falsity of that just really clarifying that and uh, it doesn't leave this the root of the problem kind of spinning in the game with more and more things to work out for this separate 
person. And so that's why, you know, when you look, uh, and anybody that looks in this way and is willing to look down to the core of this, uh, will find uh, the same type of experience. It's just very, very emphatic and very direct, and, and it's, uh, it's not a, mm, it's not so much a process. It's more of a kind of, it's a resolution of the very heart of the problem itself. So if the, if the problem is addressed, and it's hit at the very deep core of things, then it's resolved, and then full stop, and then, you know, it's a clear seeing of that. Pretty clear, at least, and in my experience, that this is really the deepest, uh, most fulfilling, most uh, rewarding experience. When I was faster, I was always behind. When I was faster, I was always behind. Uh, because it's just the essence. It's the essence of it all. The essence of uh, you know religion. It's the essence of poetry. It's the essence of art. It's the essence of uh, what motivates us at the deepest level. So to be standing at that kind of fountainhead, it's uh, it's quite extraordinary, I think. So, um, John, how do you explain the intellect's difficulty in having the capacity to appreciate this direct pointing? Well, I don't think the intellect can appreciate this. I don't think the intellect can actually understand what we're talking about. And you know, one of the one of the difficulties that we eventually get over uh, is re a realization that this is not a matter of the mind. I mean, you know, you can study philosophy and you can read texts, and the mind can intellectually debate various, you know, traditions and what the concepts mean and all that. But you know, you'll always remain you know, kind of removed, you know, from this. And so a very important uh, point, and I think something that was impressed on me and made sense and kind of was able to embrace that is realizing the mind cannot understand uh, what is being pointed to. So, you know, people s say those different things, and we hear that, you know, like you can't grasp it with the mind, and the mind will never know, you know, never, never know who you are, and uh, all these different things. And and you come to see that that's true. I mean, the mind deals with concepts, and the mind deals with appearances, and the mind labels and it divides and it structures things and it it works in duality and all that. And and all that really has nothing to do with this kind of um, deep core of the heart of the of the of the deepest. And uh, I think that's changing. I think that. Uh, a lot of people are aware of this. They're realizing that people are getting to the core of this, that they have looked at these issues, and that uh, more people are stepping out of the doubts and out of the questioning and out of that sense of seeking. And it has kind of an impact because, you know, suddenly people become aware that, gee, you know, there are people living their lives uh, at ease and at peace with things. They're no longer on the treadmill you know, they're no longer uh, in the search and in the seeking game. And I think that, that the news of that is getting around because, you know, you see, um, you know, I mostly deal with people that I speak with or, you know, people that might have been influenced by Bob or myself or other people that, you know, that I know. And so I mostly see that because that's kind of what's in my immediate experience. But that certainly, you know, has taken off. Uh, a great deal over the last few years because there are more people out there sharing this, there are more people writing about this, there are more people communicating about this based on their own direct experience and, and I think people are seeing that it's not just a repeating of you know some secondhand information that 
that they're speaking from direct heart experience of that freedom and expressing it in their own words and from their own direct knowing and also seeing that that's helping people. So it's not like they're promoting themselves as something special, but it's that freedom that they found is having an impact on a greater and greater circle of, of people who have uh, looked into this for themselves. And I've seen this just in the last few years, you know, uh, just uh, really, really take off. And because it's so direct and because it's so available, it's something that people can share with their friends and with people that they know such that, you know, that that person turns around and, and shares some of this with someone that they know. And it kind of goes from person to person. And uh, it's kind of already, you know, spread out quite a few, you know, series of kind of expanding circles and, you know, we can look at some of the people on the web and uh, some of the people who are having their own meetings and sharing this. And uh, uh, I'm seeing more and more people who uh, I feel are truly and genuinely understanding for themselves. And that's uh, so that's exciting and that's encouraging. And that's one of the reasons to talk about this, to realize that it is making an impact. That's a good thing. It just feels intuitively that, you know, the suffering that we had this uh, seeking and suffering that was part of our experience and, you know, that we eventually realized was unnecessary or it was possible to live free of that. And then you see, you know, others in the appearance who uh, are recognizing the same thing and it's bringing a greater clarity and a greater sense of harmony and freedom uh, to uh, growing numbers of people. So... Uh, so I have a very positive experience of that, uh, that you know, beyond any doubt whatsoever, that what Nisargadatta has shared, what Sailor Bob has shared, this uh, particular message and the way it can impact people is definitely making a very substantial impact on a great number of people. And I think that we're just kind of at the beginning of that because, you know, the more people that share this, the more people that see it, the more people that realize it's possible. I mean, I'm getting people coming to my meetings over here all the time. It's very clear for them. I, I can see it in their face. I can see it in their sharing. They, they've they gotten to the bottom of this, and they're off uh, sharing it with their own friends, and uh, and their friends will share it with their friends, and so it's going, you know. And So that's my take on it so far.